Hello and welcome back to JVCTR. If you're new, my name is Johnny and today we're doing a full car wrap on my GR Yaris. So first of all, I will start with a disclaimer. Um, this is not my first full car wrap. I have done one before this. So I would very much consider myself to be an amateur. Ambitious, but still an amateur. Um, so plan for this video is I'm gonna prep the car, get the whole car wrapped, and by the end of this video, we should have a fully wrapped GR Yaris. But in real life, uh, I'll be doing it over a number of days. So there's gonna be a whole loads of continuity errors and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so I mean, this is quite, quite an ambitious project. I'm a little bit nervous, not gonna lie. Uh, but to get started, let's get the car prepped. And to do that, we're gonna start with quite a basic wash actually. So rinse, snow foam, and then wash all over with the two bucket method. Uh, then we can clean the wheels, remove the badges, um, and then we'll go into a bit more of a deep clean. So just whilst the snow foam is doing its thing, I thought I'd talk you through what we're using today. So uh, Bodywork Shampoo um, is gonna be ah, the Meguiar's Gold Class car wash. Um, I like that stuff, it's pretty good. Snow foam on the car at the moment is Autoglim Polar Blast with a standard snow foam lance applicator. Um, I will be only using Bodywork Shampoo on the wheels because they're relatively clean and I don't wanna to put too many chemicals on them. Uh, but I have a wheel woolly to, uh, to clean them. And then for the bodywork, a lamb's wool wash mitt. Um, the other extra thing I'm gonna be doing on the wheels is actually cleaning the tires. So uh, I've got Guion's Q2M tire cleaner, which is really good stuff. Um, and then a tire cleaning brush. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm not removing the wheels to do the wrap. So there may be a time where the wrap touches the wheel. So if I can get the wheels as clean as I can, including the tires, and hopefully that should lead to a better application of the wrap. So yes, yeah, so that's what we're doing today. Um, oh, this thing, uh, water purifier, my new favorite baby. Um, so I live in quite a hard water area, which means if I don't get the car exactly clean, I get a load of water spots on it. And with it being a black car, they're really noticeable. I'll show some uh, on the screen now from where I didn't dry it last time by accident, I may add. Um, so this is purifying my water before it goes into the pressure washer. And that means if there's any spots that I miss or don't dry, then hopefully they shouldn't show up. They should just dry clear. Well, at least that's the plan. But anyway, I need to get rid of the snow foam. Let's go. Now, whilst I clean the wheels, I let the paintwork dry naturally, which is something you definitely shouldn't do during a car wash. But seeing as I have my new water purifier, uh, I figured I wanted to see how well it was working and also see how clean snow foam makes the paintwork without actually touching the paint. And as you can see, the results are quite impressive. Um, I haven't actually touched the paint at all yet, um, just snow foam with some purified water, and it's stunningly clean. So that means when I put my wash mitt onto the car, there should be very little dirt particles for me to drag across the paintwork, and therefore, hopefully, I shouldn't induce any swell marks, or at least, that's the plan. Okay, so next up is the removal of the badges. So first up, I'm just gonna take a picture of where this is to get a rough positioning for when we put it back on to make sure it's about right. Um, I mean, you can, if you wish, uh, put masking tape all the way around it so you get a little cut out and then line it up with this here and then keep your masking plate template so that when your wrap is on, 
you can then put your template back on and get the badge in exactly the right place. Um, if I'm honest, I'm not that fast if it's a couple of mil out, um, so I'll just do it by eye. But in terms of removing, um, I'm going to be using some Oral B Essential Floss, uh, mint flavoured because only the best for my GR Yaris. You can also use fishing wire. Uh, fishing wire is less likely to snap, but arguably more likely to damage your paint. This will snap quite a lot, which makes this job very frustrating. Uh, but essentially, you'll see in a second, just stick it behind the badge, seesaw out, um, and then we'll get some tar and glue remover on the whole car um, and remove all the glue spots that we have to remove. Right, so badges are off and we can start doing a little bit more of a deep clean. So we're gonna start with the glue and tar remover. Um, I'll focus on the areas where the badges were because obviously there was glue there uh, and then we'll end up doing probably the lower half just to get rid of any tar that's been kicked up from the tires over the past few months. Um, and then I'll follow that on with some iron remover. Now, it's unlikely there will be much iron on the car from the road, but depending on how this came from Japan, it could have gone on rail, it could have gone wherever so I don't know how much tar is going to sorry iron is going to be on the car so we'll uh, clean this off and uh, we should be good to move into the clay bar and then our final wash and then I think we might be ready. So that is the iron and tar remover all done and uh, the car is looking pretty clean. The next stage is to clay bar the paint, but actually the paintwork is in really, really good condition. So I don't want to do the clay bar because I risk marring the paint. So actually what's left is to dry the car, get it in the garage and then we can start wrapping. Okay, welcome to day two. Um, after a very abrupt ending to day one because it started to rain, so I had to very quickly get the car in the garage and as a result, unfortunately I didn't film, but you didn't miss too much. But anyway, uh, today we're gonna start getting the wrap on the car and this is what you need. Um, so first up, I'm gonna be using panel wipe. Uh, I'll be doing this panel by panel and this is the final stage of the cleaning process. So this is like an alcohol-based solution that will remove any chemical residues left behind by the soaps and uh, the other removers we've used on the paintwork to get it to this stage. So after this, there should be theoretically nothing left on the paint to ensure that the wrap sticks nicely. Uh, tools that you'll need, uh, I've got loads of masking tape. Um, I'll be using this uh, to A, protect the paint from anywhere where I've got a cut on top of the paint. Um, you can just sort of score the, the vinyl and, and rip, which is kind of what I'll be aiming to do, but as a, an extra safety measure, I'll be sticking this underneath. Um, this is also useful because the vinyl doesn't stick to it. So if we need to tuck like between here, for example, I can put the masking tape uh, on the edge of the bit that I don't want it to stick to, uh, and then it will glide past it and I'll be able to tuck underneath. So a bit of masking tape is always useful. Some nice knifeless tape, which I believe I'll probably use most in the door shuts. Uh, you lay this underneath the vinyl and then you pull the knife, the, the tape out or the wire out and then it will cut it for you. Um, that means no cutting on the paintwork and you get a relatively straight line depending on how well you lay this. Squeegee uh, and a micro squeegee uh, are pretty much your tools you're going to be using all the time. I've actually gone for branded ones. These are both Avery and they make one hell of a difference. Um, the last car app I did, I had cheap Amazon stuff uh, and it it was okay, but these are much easier to get an equal pressure across uh, and the felt is much better on this cover as well. So hopefully there'll be less scratches in the vinyl. Uh, of course, you need a knife. I have a knife with a 30 degree blade and loads of spares. Um, some magnets to hold 
the vinyl on the side of the car. Uh, and then in terms of removing stuff, we've got removal tools and a socket set, and that should be us. Oh yeah, there's a few more things that I forgot to mention. Uh, you'll also need a heat gun. I'm using just the cheap one today, uh, but actually the cheap ones work really well and are super hot, so would recommend. Um, tape measure for measuring panels, scissors for cutting the vinyl to size, and of course, the vinyl itself. So today we're using Avery Dennison's Supreme Vinyl. Uh, I've used this before. I think it's good and quite easy to work with. The color is called light blue and uh, it's very similar to Toyota's flame blue, I think it's called, uh, that they offer on their other models. Although I must admit that was kind of unintentional. Um, it's also quite close to the Focus RS blue, just without the fleck, uh, which again, was slightly unintentional. But either way, I think once it's on the car, this will look absolutely banging. So um, yeah, let's, let's go, let's do it. You said baby, I'm not feeling it lately, but I hope we can be friends, don't you? Ooh, ooh. You said maybe if things weren't so crazy, I could love you like I used to do. Ooh, ooh. Then you kiss me goodbye, and wish me the best in life, said you needed some time. Right then, so that is the bonnet done. Uh, I'm actually quite pleased with my edges. I think they look really quite nice. It's probably the nicest bonnet I've done so far. So uh, yeah, pleased with that. Got the fog surrounds off as well for the bumper. Um, as you can see, uh, it wasn't too difficult. I uh, got to work out how to get in from behind. Um, and then you can see here, you've got basically just two screws uh, and a whole load of clips. So take your time um, and they come out actually quite easily. Um, the plan for the bumper because I know it's going to be difficult um, I don't want to risk taking the bumper off so I'm going to wrap it basically as is in situ um, I'm going to mask up all the areas to that are going to be tucked under to make it easier to well, basically slide off the masking tape and into where it needs to be um, and then we'll just have a go I guess so um, without further ado let's crack on Changes to come. And on that day, Johnny didn't wrap the bumper. Johnny made a mistake, stopped filming, and rage quit. Okay, so I have nearly finished the door, uh, my first door, and it was kind of plain sailing apart from the handle. What a ridiculous design to remove the handle. Um, but yeah, we're done now anyway. On a slight tangent, um, I've been sort of eyeing around the interior as to where I can bring a bit of blue inside the car to sort of match it all up and brighten the interior a bit. But all the panels on the interior seem to be like quite big. So if I were to wrap any of them, it would look a little bit garish. But as I've been putting the door card back in, I've noticed there's a tiny slither of gloss black along here. Now I don't even know if the camera can pick it up, but I figured that would be absolutely ideal just to add that tiny touch of blue to the inside just to tie it all together. So uh, we'll wrap that and then we can carry on building the door.
Okay, so that is our first side done. And uh, I must admit, it took quite a long time. Because um, normally when you glass a panel, uh, you pull it tight, make sure it's nice and flat, and then you can crack on and squeegee away. But with the Yaris and its rather wide arches, um, if you glass across this panel, you've got way too much stretch if you then just want to push it into here. So you have to kind of lay, lay the vinyl into this and then squeegee it out. Um, and yeah, it just took a little bit of time. Uh, and same story with the side skirt as well. Um, that's contoured all the way along. So again, you have to, yeah, really work the vinyl. But the finish is actually pretty good. I'm quite pleased with it. The embossing, I think, looks really good. Um, so next plan of action is we're gonna spin the car around and do the other side and the boot. And I think we'll leave the bumper last. So um, yeah, let's do that. And just as I was preparing to do this big panel, I realized that actually I don't have a sticker to go here. Um, I actually took two attempts on the other side. I thought I had a spare and I don't. So um, that's kind of put a spanner in the works for wrapping this one today. So whilst I source an additional logo to go there, uh, I'll make a start on the back. Don't make me So the whole of the back of the car is now done. I've just finished doing this panel here, which is I think most the most complex because you've got some really tight seals around 
the windows, uh, you've got the embossing on this side, you've got the fuel cap, you've got this really awkward arch, um, which was a hell of a lot more complex than I thought, um, and you've also got a door shut. So, I mean, that took me quite a while, I'm not gonna lie, um, but it's done now, and actually, the passenger side looks so much better than the driver's side. I mean, I guess maybe I'm getting better and well-practiced as I go through this project, but yeah, it's uh, certainly better on this side than it is on that side. Um, but anyway, uh, we've got one more panel to do, which is the front bumper, which I messed up first time around, so I'm not gonna mess it up this time, hopefully. Um, to do that, I need some space in the garage, which means hanging the car at the front. Unfortunately, it's minging, which means the back of the car is gonna get covered in water, but never mind. Uh, let's just crack on. And that's it. Um, arguably, you could say that's a wrap. Oh dear, I did it. Uh, anyway, there is just one final stage to do, and that is one last clean, uh, because although it's fresh vinyl, it's covered in my fingerprints and residue from the masking tape. So today, uh, I'm gonna be using, well, just doing a normal wash, really, and then at the end, we'll do a bit of vinyl or rubber care. That is to get rid of all the, well, stuff on the rubber. Um, and also, interestingly, this is a new product that I haven't tried yet. We're going to use Autoglim Polar Seal. Um, so you apply this through a snow foam lance and then spray it straight off. And then that should give you a hydrophobic coating, which will probably last about a month. Um, so I'm quite intrigued by this. But anyway, we'll use the little cleaning montage as almost a reveal. And uh, we'll go from there. So there we have it, a DIY wrapped GR Yaris. And at time of filming, I think I'm the only one with a light blue Yaris, which is pretty cool. And the fact that I've done it at home in my garage is also quite cool. I mean, is it a professional job? No, not by a long stretch. Um, people who wrap cars for a living and can do it well, they earn their money. Um, this is a big job. Um, I mean, this is possibly the simplest wrap you can do. I've not done mirrors, I've not done handles, I've not done shuts. Uh, but even so, it still took me two weeks doing it just sort of evenings and weekends and as and when I had time. Um, and yeah, as I said, the, the finish is okay. It's passable. Um, this side is way better than the other side. The rear is kind of okay. Uh, the front bumper, I think, is probably subpar, uh, but I just wanted to get it on. So uh, I might do that when it's got a few stone chips in it and just redo it and have another crack. But for now, I just kind of want to drive it. So yeah, and with that, I think we'll leave it there. So if you want to see more of me, the Yaris and other car content, feel free to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, 
please give it a thumbs up because it was a lot of work. And uh, with that, I'll catch you in the next one. I, 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 I